Hello and welcome back to SLU, the Community Observatory. I'm Paul Cox and you're joining me tonight for an update on Comet C2012-S1 ISON. Now I'm going to refer to it throughout this broadcast as Comet ISON. And this is the comet that many hope is going to fill our skies with huge tails in December after it's made its slingshot around the sun. Now, all of the images you'll see tonight were taken by SLU members controlling the SLU robotic telescopes in the Canary Islands. Now, if you're new to SLU, our events are free to the public, but if you've ever fancied controlling some big telescopes at a world-class observatory site, then please consider joining SLU. Uh, it's great value. We have a community made up of a huge range of different knowledge levels and it's really easy to use the telescope. So don't be put off thinking that uh, you don't know anything about astronomy. Now is your chance to start. So, Comet ISON. You know, it's now only 10 days away from its close encounter with the Sun on the 28th of November. And that's what astronomers term perihelion. Uh, and you can see on this orbit diagram, uh, it's slowly approaching and it speeds up. The, the closer it gets to the sun, it speeds up, speeds up, speeds up until it really gets slung shot around the sun, uh, traveling at enormous speed. I'll tell you about that later. Anyway, this long-awaited event has been anticipated by hordes of both professional and amateur astronomers around the globe for the last year. And Comet ISON is already the most photographed and studied comet in history. Now, tonight, with the observatory under the clouds, we thought we'd take a look back at the images SLU members have taken since Comet ISON was discovered last year. We'll also talk about the possible scenarios for ISON's future, because nothing is certain when it comes to comets. Will it survive? It's sun grazing encounter. Who knows? We'll talk about it later. So let's take a look back over the last year and a bit. Now, Comet ISON was discovered on the 21st of September 2012 by two astronomers in Russia. And this first image that we're looking at here uh, is from SLU member Nermal Paul. And this is a negative image. So we've, we've turned it black into white and white into black because it makes faint objects easier to see. Now, look at that tiny little arrow. That's pointing towards Comet Ison. It's this tiny, tiny smudge. So these guys did a really great job at discovering Comet Ison to begin with. And no more Paul, SLU member who chases loads of comets, did really, really well to capture that image uh, in early October of last year, just a couple of weeks after it was discovered. Now, these next two images uh, are from January. And this is when SLU members started imaging Comet ISON regularly. And it's a lot, lot easier to see. And this particular one that we're seeing now is a fantastic one, uh, again by Nermal Paul, actually. And it shows Comet ISON as it's passing in front of two background galaxies. Um, now, don't forget, Comet ISON is obviously in our solar system. Uh, so those, all of the stars that you see in that image are in our particular uh, galaxy, the Milky Way. Now, those other galaxies are millions of light years away. So, I think that's a fabulous image. Now, the next image that we've got coming up uh, is also uh, one that, in fact, I think this one, I took this one. And this shows Comet Ison in March. And we can just start seeing that there's a tail growing out of its coma. Now, the coma is the dust and gas that sublimes off the comet's nucleus, and it hides the comet nucleus. We can't actually see the comet. It's shrouded in this dust and gas, and it's close enough to the sun in March to start producing these tails coming off. Now, the next image, you may remember, this is not from SLU members, so I lied earlier. This is uh, actually from the Hubble Space Telescope, this next image, if we can go to. Um, can I ask my producer to go to the uh, the one that, that's the one, please, yeah, and that's the Hubble Space Telescope image, and this, you might remember, we did a special show on this, the conspiracy theories came out in their droves for this one, right, saying that it was spaceships or other stuff, and it was just, we gave a really clear explanation of how astronomical images 
are put together. Uh, so that show is actually uh, archived on the SLU YouTube channel if you want to take a look at that. Anyway, back to SLU members. We now go into May. And this is when we started scheduling Comet ISON missions every single night. So every morning, uh, just before dawn, uh, SLU members were able to watch the live images coming in of Comet ISON. Now, we go on to the next image, and this one is still really difficult to see, isn't it? And this was the last image, image number eight. It was the last image before ISON disappeared behind the sun for 12 weeks. Now, it disappeared behind the sun only because of the relationship of Earth, the sun, and the comet. It wasn't making its closest pass. That's going to be on the 28th in 10 days' time. So it disappeared. At the end of May, it disappeared for 12 weeks, and it came back again. And a guy called Bruce Gary recovered Comet Ison uh, in uh, August, uh, August 12th. And very shortly after, five days after, we've got image number nine, and that shows uh, the first uh, recovery image from SLU members. And you can see, you can just about make out on this. It's just to the right of center, and it's still this tiny, tiny little smudge. Now, the next image shows the, the first recovery image we took, which is of good quality, and there you can see it clearly. You can see that coma again, you can see the tails, but it's still very, very low on the horizon. That's why these images are not very good quality, because, you know, when it disappeared behind the sun, it then came back in pre-dawn skies, and it came really, really low. So this is only about 12 or 15 degrees altitude just before dawn. So the image is a little bit noisy because the sky is brightening as well. Then come September and our next image, and this is when Comet Ison starts to brighten considerably. Um, and... We were just watching these images every single night and on, a, on the SLU community, on the Facebook group, we were discussing them. It was almost as if you could see changes in Comet ISON every single night. Now, this particular image that we're looking at is from the half-metre telescope that SLU members use. And the, the streaked lines in the background, those are actually the stars. Because what we've done here is we've combined a whole stack of images together um, so that we bring out more detail in the comet. But you can see that even over maybe a period of 40 minutes or so, how far the comet's moved against the background. Now, we've got a little AVI here as well, because it's pretty difficult to see um, the extent of a comet's tail. Um, and in fact, uh, if we've got that AVI coming up, I don't think we have. Uh, but it's, it's quite difficult to see the extent of a comet's tail. So what we sometimes do is we animate the images together because then you can see it a lot, lot better. So we'll, we'll leave that particular image and go on to um, image 13 for us, please. And this is another one. The, we didn't publish this widely because we knew the conspiracy boys would get hold of it and it would start a whole new conspiracy theory. And I've highlighted on this image. This, it, it really surprised me, this particular image, when I looked at it in the morning. There's this really peculiar set of objects off to the right-hand side. They're stars. I checked, and they're stars. Uh, but it looks pretty unnatural, doesn't it? So uh, anyway, moving on. We had a, tr on this next image, uh, it was such a terrific surprise. Um, in fact, this is an animation as well, hopefully, if we're running this next one. Yes, we've got it. Um, and this one is showing, uh, just checking to make sure we've got that right. No, it's the next one, please. Um, let's have a look at the next one. Sorry, I'm, I'm asking my producer to show us this. No, we've missed one. We've, we've missed the an animation that we had um, of near-Earth asteroid Eros. Um, and it was a fabulous surprise. Uh, we, I started animating the images in the morning and suddenly, just above Comet Ison, there was this other object moving. I looked on the sky, the sky charts and there it was. Near-Earth asteroid 433 Eros was moving almost alongside Comet Ison. Have a look back on, the, on some of our other shows and you'll be able to see that one. And 
let's take a quick step down. Let's go to image number 16, please, because we're nearly now at the bottom. And this was an image put together by SLU member Christina Feliciano, uh, and she's a great comet hunter. And this is one of the many images that she published uh, to the Comet ISON observing campaign. That's a NASA backed campaign. Uh, it's a program collaboration between professional astronomers and amateur astronomers. And we've had a whole series of fantastic images like this. And the next image was actually taken by SLU member uh, Don Cranford. Don's been taking a, a whole stack of Comet ISON missions. He's probably got one of the best collections. And then finally, to uh, bring us up to date, we are looking at uh, one of the images from what we call the T2 Wide Field Telescope. And this is when uh, ISON has got so bright and large that it's visible in this very wide field image. And you can see there, uh, that's a, a bright star in Virgo. Uh, I can't remember its name, actually. It's, uh, it's an odd name, that one. Uh, but anyway, have a look at this final image. And this last image is, I think, terrific. It actually shows Comet Ison showing its very distinctive green color and its very finely structured tails. Now, the line that you see crossing through the image, that's actually a satellite, a man-made satellite, uh, whizzing through the image uh, just before dawn. There's another one slightly lower down in that image as well. Anyway, that kind of brings us up to date with those. But shortly after that image was taken, reports started coming in of some dramatic brightening of Comet Ison. It had brightened to around magnitude 5 or 6, which is kind of on the boundary of naked eye visibility if you've got superb eyesight and very dark skies. But it would be easily visible with a pair of binoculars or even a small telescope. Now, this recent outburst is definitely a sign that the comet's nucleus is undergoing some major physical changes. Now, this may be the anticipated brightening as it approaches ever nearer to the sun. But as we've seen a few times in recent years, these sudden brightening events with comets can also indicate that the comet's nucleus is breaking apart and exposing more of its volatile material. So it then causes more dust um, and gas uh, to, to come off the comet nucleus. But at present, we don't believe that that is the case with Comet Ison at the moment. Although, like so many aspects of cometary science, we really don't know yet. Now, one problem we're facing now is that Comet Ison is becoming increasingly difficult to image as it gets lower and lower in the pre-dawn skies. Uh, now, it's about 10 degrees, 10 or 12 degrees above the horizon. However, it will, although it's going to be hidden from ground-based telescopes, NASA's stereo instrument uh, will image ISON on the 21st of November, as well as a slew of other space telescopes such as MESSENGER and SOHO. So we may have to wait until then to understand what is happening to ISON. So what's next for Comet ISON? Well, that first scenario is that it's currently or will soon break apart, disintegrate. And it's now entered the zone where those previous comets have disintegrated. So if it's going to do it now is approaching the time when it's quite possible. Time will tell on this uh, whether or not that's the case. Now, if the nucleus remains intact, Comet Ison still has to face its major hurdle to survival, being slingshot around the sun on the 28th of November, when it passes a mere 730,000 miles from the sun. And it's going to be travelling at 845 thousand miles an hour. Now, the huge forces acting on its relatively fragile nucleus could rip it apart. Now, if that happens, we may not know until the debris comes back into view in early December. Uh, and I think uh, it was Comet 2011 W3 Lovejoy that did that a couple of years ago. And that turned into an absolutely spectacular uh, comet, showing these huge tails as it broke apart. Or possibly, nothing will come back into view if it dis if the disintegrated, disintegrated fragments, fragments are vaporized by the sun. So the second scenario is that it won't survive its sun grazing encounter. Now, simulations, some simulations have indicated that it's more likely to survive. But frankly, there are so many unknown variables. For example, we don't even know exactly how big the nucleus is. These simulations incorporate some fairly hefty guesstimates. So much like everything else to do with comets, we're not sure if that second scenario is going to happen. But what we do know is that we're all hoping 
for the last scenario. And the last scenario is that Comet Ison survives its violent encounter with our star and emerges into our pre-dawn skies in December, hopefully sporting some fantastic tales arching across the skies. So, 26th of December, it makes its closest approach to Earth, just 28 million miles away. But it should come back into view just before dawn in mid-December. And you can be certain that as soon as it becomes visible again, SLU will be there with some live shows for you, whatever's happened to it. Anyway, we have got some great shows lined up for you at SLU. Keep an eye on the homepage for upcoming events. We'll give you an update this week on our visit to NASA. We're going to NASA this week. And it's after our lengthy campaign to get the threat of near-Earth asteroids on the politicians' agendas. And we were invited to participate in NASA's Asteroid Grand Challenge. So we're doing that on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. You can watch it live, I believe, on uh, NASA TV. So uh, come and join us there. And we've also got uh, some other fabulous shows and some great developments coming with SLU that we'll let you know about very shortly. So I hope you've enjoyed our kind of lightning walk through SLU member images of Comet Ison ever since its discovery last September in 2012. So join us again for our next live event. Keep an eye open on the SLU homepage. My thanks to our producer tonight and uh, we'll leave you there. Good night everybody. See you on the next show. Bye-bye.